Hello out there on Facebook land, this is Matt Meyer, your county executive. I'm not really a Facebook Live TV personality, so I'm not really sure what to say, but I want to welcome you all to the first annual Newcastle County Iftar Dinner. Everyone is welcome here. If you're not here, if you're here, you're welcome to partake in food, uh, uh, generously provided by Nabi. If you happen not to be here, please get a bite at home. Uh, enjoy your iftar with us. We'll, uh, the program will begin shortly. So just stay patient, stay here. Maybe if you need to get up, you know, get more something to drink, that's fine. We're still here. Give us five to 10 minutes and we'll get going, all right? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum everybody and hello everybody in the state of Delaware. We are uh, I'm talking to you from the first uh, iftar that is being hosted by the Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer. Thank you very much Matt for hosting such a wonderful iftar. Uh, this is, this, these small gestures are very critical, especially at this time when people who are new immigrants to this country are feeling so insecure, where the atmosphere about Islamophobia and xenophobia is so pronounced. Uh, gestures like this coming from government officials uh, are really, really very positive and reassuring for people that America continues to uh, preserve its tradition of welcoming immigrants who not only vitalize our economy and vitalize our culture, but also make America one of the greatest experiments in multiculturalism and freedom uh, in the world and in human history. And so therefore, I want to thank Matt Meyer for hosting this wonderful iftar. Uh, and I'm also delighted that so many Muslims turned up. Salaam alaikum. I'm very hungry. I have to go back to food. Bye. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the first Muslim get together with, with County Executive Mr. Matt Meyer. I welcome all the community members and pretty soon you will get into the program and I welcome on behalf of the Muslim community all the uh, all the people attending the today's program.
because we will be giving more info on the event after.
Um, now I would like to introduce to the floor um, Newcastle County Executive Matt Myers. Good evening. 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 First, if there, there. No, 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 no. Senator Kuntz says Thomas Jefferson in 1805. That's correct. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> you, Senator, give the round of applause. He said, In 1805. Because he was outed. He was outed? <laughs> he was like Obama. <laughs> he was like Obama. He was outed. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. That's a story. Uh, in 1805, Thomas Jefferson uh, invited the first Muslim ambassadors from, I believe, Tunisia to the White House for dinner at 3.30 in the afternoon. He was just inviting him to welcome the first Muslim ambassador. Thomas Jefferson did not know it was Ramadan. When the ambassador declined the invitation and explained, uh, they moved the invitation to the evening and turned it into the first uh, iftar dinner. It actually was the only iftar dinner. Uh, at the White House until 1996, when President Clinton restarted the tradition and held, I guess, the second uh, Iftar dinner, and then it became an annual event, and it continued every year since then uh, until this year. Uh, this year, uh, there will not be, unfortunately, an Iftar dinner in Washington. However, however, you should know that where you're sitting right now is a property that was acquired by Newcastle County, by the Newcastle County Executive in the 1970s for the purpose of being the home of the County Executive. So it's effectively the White House <laughs> of, of Newcastle County. And so I want to welcome everyone here to the White House of Newcastle County. Uh, for the first annual, and I guess you'll hold me to that next year, the first annual uh, Iftar dinner. Before I start, I want to highlight a few additional people without whom tonight would not have been possible. I have a phenomenal staff. I would challenge Senator Coons to say it's the best staff ever, uh, the best executive staff in the history of county government. Um, Kathy Jennings, my chief administrative officer, is here. Um, Rich Hall, my head of land use, is here. Marcus Henry, my uh, head of community services, is here. Uh, Jason Miller, communications director. Brian Boyle, policy director. Matt Rosen, policy advisor. Maria, my, I think everybody here knows Maria. Uh, uh, Rashad Taylor, deputy chief administrative officer. Andrea Almond, uh, Jane Ritteni in community services. I mention all of them uh, because without their support, and they are so supportive of what we're trying to do here in the county. Without their support, nights like tonight would not be possible. I also want to emphasize to you the way I believe you develop a county, the way I believe you develop a city, the way I believe you develop a state is based on three principles, three guiding principles that I use and think about every single day. Those three principles, I call them the three T's. Talent, technology, and tolerance. Talent, technology, and tolerance. No Trump. <laughs> and I've, I've since started to add, I'm adding T's the longer I'm, now we got training, I'm learning a lot about transportation, uh, but, but those three T's guide us, and I'm not sure anything is more important and tolerance. If you look back at what makes this country great, it's that we include people. The times we've excluded people are times that were bad for this country and times when we look back and we're embarrassed for this country. 
countries around the world look to America and look at our tolerance and look at us as a model of tolerance and model themselves after that, and that's what makes us great. You know, seven years ago, I was in Iraq, and I threw, it was my job at the State Department in Mosul, Iraq, to create an iftar dinner, to do the job, the tremendous job that Jessica Gibson did tonight. Like, can we give Jessica a round of applause? And I had to uh, put together a group of Iraqi leaders from also Iraq. And at the time, we were doing a lot, of, a lot of work with women's groups, trying to bring the women of uh, Iraq together and give them business opportunities. And one of the keynote speakers that night was a woman named Samira Ali al Nuaimi. She's uh, an Iraqi woman. And she asked us all, why do Muslims fast on Ramadan? Why, do, why would God... Why would Allah want people to fast, to not eat on Ramadan? And she cited two verses from the Quran. Uh, one, she said, it is better for you that you fast if you ye only knew. It is better for you, for you that ye fast if ye only knew. And she cited this to say that you want to feel the same hunger that the least fortunate among us feel. You want to feel that hunger that the least fortunate among us feel. And she cited that to tell us that every day during Ramadan and beyond in your life, you think, you, you try to feel, you try to empathize, understand that hunger that the least among us feel. And at the time, she was talking about mostly Iraq, but I've been thinking about that in terms of Newcastle County. How do we find the least among us and help them? and lift them up, be tolerant of them, use our talent, use our technology to lift them up. The second thing she so talked about was taqwa. Again, from the Quran, she said, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may attain taqwa. And there are people in this room who probably can talk for hours and hours about taqwa. i got to be honest with you, taqwa is the name of a camp a couple hours from here where uh, friends of mine went when I was a kid, Camp Taqwa. Um, but of course, in, in uh, the Muslim tradition, it means something very different. It's about a, a conscious and cognizant uh, faith in Allah. And uh, she spoke that night about how it's not just about believing in Allah, it's about a consciousness. It's about watching and understanding where you're going, understanding every step you take, and making sure that step is a step with goodness. And so actually, though I'm a Jew, every year during Ramadan time, I take some time to think about those two principles. What am I doing? What am I doing to feel that pain of hunger? To feel that pain of the least fortunate among us? And what am I doing to watch every single step I take to make sure the step I'm taking is a step of goodness? Moving the world forward, moving the county forward. This is a magical event for me, I think for my staff, and for the people of this county. At this time in American history, it's so important that we come together and we say a lot of what we're seeing on TV, a lot of what our kids are seeing on TV, is not who we are as people. When you look around this room, this is who we are as a county, this is who we are as a state, and this is who we are as a country. So I want to thank each of you for making this first Iftar dinner in Newcastle County's history possible here at our very own White House. Now, one thing that's a little frustrating for me, and I know for my mother, uh, is that she sees what's going on in Washington and she gets frustrated and she gets angry and she wants to do something. It's, it's kind of hard to do something when you have a, and, and, and get angry and call your senators when you have a senator like Senator Coons. Because he's always like a two steps ahead of where I want us to be. He's been up since five o'clock this morning. He's been up since five o'clock this morning, as he is most mornings, working for all of us, working tirelessly in Washington. And I think he'd agree that now, more than ever, we need him and we need his voice. Washington. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to former 
County Executive, Chris. Thank you, Matt. It is uh, great to be back at the White House. <laughs> and I will tell you, this is the White House I'd rather be in. So, assalamu alaikum. And Ramadan Karim. This was a delicious, wonderful dinner and a terrific chance uh, for all of us to gather to be together this evening. Um, if you didn't already know that we are blessed to have a county executive uh, with a spirit of humility and grace and with a deep understanding of our whole community, uh, you know it now. Let's give Matt another round of applause. He's a very, very talented man who understands uh, what it means to be a public leader at this time in our country. Um, to put it simply, we need to be a nation that builds bridges, not walls, that celebrates all of us, and that recognizes that our strength is in our different paths. That whether it's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, whether it's Lent or it is Ramadan, the different traditions of our Abrahamic faiths that give us the opportunity to reflect and to seek peace and to do good works together and to understand that calling that moves us towards each other rather than away from each other. These are great moments of blessing for our entire nation. So uh, thank you, Matt, for hosting this uh, first Newcastle County Iftar in this uh, wonderful historic carriage house um, and for all the different ways I think we will uh, find to work together in the future to make this a stronger, and a dynamic, and interesting uh, event as it already is. Um, to the clergy who are present, to the sheikhs and imams, to um, the rabbi and father um, and seminarian who are with us, um, thank you um, for what you do um, to be leaders in our community, um, to be the sort of people who call us to be better people. Um, this has been a very demanding year. Uh, we have seen um, publicly a rise of hate and of threats, um, not just in our country and the world, but, but right here. The Jewish Community Center, um, ISD, uh, were the subject of threats, uh, bomb threats, uh, of vandalism. Um, we had an event in our own state capital uh, that I think was a shameful uh, rejection uh, of uh, the inclusion of all faiths uh, in the daily prayer. As Dr. Mokhtar Khan was kind enough to join me uh, articulating to our community, um, there are two paths we can take uh, in, a, in a moment of division. Um, and one is to be uh, concerned by our differences, and the other is to embrace them. And to not just tolerate, but to celebrate. Uh, to recognize um, the depth and the greatness um, that is at the very heart of Islam, as well as Judaism, as well as Christianity. Um, and the great strengths of those who have no faith, but who bring an ethical approach uh, to governance and to civic participation. Um, I'm thrilled to be joining this uh, this evening uh, with Amin Hussein. I just wanted to say it is so good to be with you, my friend. Um, I know many of you know about the journey that's brought him to be with us this evening, and it just it does uh, it does my heart excuse me it does my heart uh, good uh, to be with you again this evening and to see um, you safe and here with us uh, in Delaware. council president with us and a county councilman who knew every bit as quickly as I did about Jefferson. I gotta tell you, if you, if you don't appreciate John Cartier, you should listen to this man. <laughs> and to the very talented um, general managers and uh, senior administrators of Newcastle County Government, I won't yet concede that they are the best ever assembled. <laughs> I'll suggest we're neck and neck. Uh, but you certainly have some, uh, some gifted and talented uh, people here. Um, President Obama said in the last White House iftar um, that our iftar is a reminder of the freedoms that bind us together as Americans, including the freedom of religion, that inviolable right to practice our faiths freely. We're not really practicing our faiths freely if we only practice them in our own communities and in our own houses of worship. In order to overcome these moments, we need to keep doing what we have done to all gather at the JCC and say any threat against a Jewish cemetery or a Jewish community center is a threat to all of us. 
to gather at the ISD and reject the hateful travel ban that was proposed by this president. To gather in Dover and to say that at the beginning of the legislative session, all our faiths are worthy of recognition and inclusion and respect. That's how we show who we are. I get up every morning and commute to our nation's capital, and I do so with hope and optimism because I am rooted here, because of the quality, the character, the faith, and the leadership that you show in this terrific community, this wonderful, blessed county, in this corner of our great country. We have some real challenges in front of us. We have some real challenges in front of us. But the entire world will see our character in how we respect and embrace each other. I'm thrilled to have this opportunity to be with you tonight. And this program began with hearing from one of our promising young leaders for the future, and it will conclude with hearing from one of our promising great leaders for the future. So let us remember during this holy month um, that we are blessed to have spirited young people, and from them we will hear the wisdom that will bring us through. Thank you. Life should be richer and fuller for each. 
based on potential and ability. So I did a quick search of what people my age believed of the American Dream today. In a study conducted by the Harvard Institute of Politics, it was found that almost 50% of millennials believe that the American Dream is dead. I could not find this further from the truth. As long as we have the ability to speak up and change what we believe needs changing, the American Dream is very much alive. But I can easily tell you what the American Dream is not. It is not one size fits all. It is not having one uniform dream of a big house, fancy cars, and a lot of money. It is not having a checklist where you know where the next step is because life gets in the way. You often aren't going to know where your next step is going to be. But the fact of the American Dream is that progress is available and it is available here and now. So what is the here and now of the American Dream? Why is the United States the place of progress? Well, you hear it all the time. It's the land of the free and the home of the brave. So why is it that we constantly hear people questioning how free we are in this country? I argue that no matter what we can and cannot do, free speech is the most liberating tool that we have as Americans. Take the protest that I just handed, for example. The day I stood at the Philadelphia International Airport, there was a family of Syrian refugees detained there, which I just recently found out was Amir's family. So I stood there proudly, and I fought for people that didn't have a voice. His family spent years in brutal conditions and months of time to find safe haven in the United States, only to be turned away when they got here. I would not stand for this. So I stood there, and I used my voice fight for what I believe needed changing, and because of that, change followed. But it can also look different. Take women's progress. A century ago, women did not have the right to vote. Now, women are holding office. Take Black Lives Matter. Whether you agree with this movement or not, the fact that we can speak up and change what we believe needs changing is the ultimate sign of progress. But people will tell you that the divisions you see in society are signs that we are lacking progress. People are doubting the melting pot theory, that the United States is a place where different cultures mesh together into one. But I argue we are not a melting pot. We are a stew in which we have different ingredients, but each one is just as important as the other. And each one has the potential to live up to their ability. So if we each have our different potentials, then how can we measure success? Well, we often make the mistake of looking at someone with a big house and fancy cars and label them as successful, but we have no idea where they started. I would argue the power of ambition is more successful. In the news, I saw that a homeless man became valedictorian. You might already look at somebody that's valedictorian and say that they are successful, but a man that was homeless and became valedictorian traveled an unimaginable journey that I would argue is more successful than most billionaires, but it can also look smaller. It can be the person in front of you at a supermarket or the person working at a fast food restaurant because you have no idea where they started. They could have been homeless. They could have battled an addiction. And now they are providing for themselves and for their families. That is success. And that is the exact reason that I don't say I live the American dream just because my father did. Because you can't be born into success if success is the measure of your own progress. So what is the point of me proving to you today that the American dream still exists. It is because pessimism staggers progress. If we don't believe that we have the ability to change, we will never change. So speak up, change what you believe needs changing, and the American dream exists for each one of you. It will just look different. Thank you.
So I'm here to read uh, the proclamation proclaiming the month of Ramadan, the holy month of fasting, as Muslim Awareness and Appreciation Month in the state of Delaware. Whereas Islam, Islam is to improve our society so that we live up to the ideals of freedom, 
equality, and justice. And whereas this country recognizes, this county recognizes the observance of the holy month of Ramadan as a month of fasting, sacrifice, and reflection, henceforth as part and parcel of our country's religious and cultural heritage. And whereas the, as the month of Ramadan is observed, we must remember the critical importance of the respect that is to be accorded all faiths and beliefs as reflected in the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, which forbids the making of any law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise of religion. Now, therefore, be it known that Newcastle County in the state of Delaware pro proclaims the month of Ramadan as Muslim Awareness and Appreciation Month, be it further known that Newcastle County extends its best regards to Muslims who observe the month of Ramadan in this county and throughout the world, be it further known that, the Newcastle, that Newcastle County encourages schools and employers throughout our county to extend religious accommodations in according with existing law to the many Muslim students in our schools and Muslim workers throughout our state. Be it further known that all residents of this county are encouraged to join Newcastle County in celebrating the collective ingenuity, creativity, cultures, traditions, of, and traditions of Muslims, and committing ourselves to raise awareness of the, and appreciation of the month of Ramadan by participating in events honoring the contributions of Muslims. Thank you.
I chose to continue to work. So our love to this country is really different from the love of the